group of medical personnel from Taichung Tzu Hospital helped clean up the home of a disadvantaged. At the COP26, various parties gathered to discuss the loss and damage incurred by climate change. Staff from Taichung Tzu Hospital, led by Superintendent Jian Shouxing, went to Chao Tuan with Tzu volunteers to clean up the home of Mr. Jiang, who lives alone and scavengers for a living. The house was full of garbage, almost without any place to stand. This can be recycled, and this bag is for recyclables. Jian Shouxing, the superintendent of Taichung Tzu Hospital, stood in a garbage dump and led the colleagues in the hospitals to clean for the care recipient. For many disadvantaged groups in society, the care for the disadvantaged groups will always be the core of medical care. Let's participate and experience more. 56-year-old solitary Mr. Jiang suffered from the sequelae of meningitis when he was a child, causing weakness on the right side of his body. He lives by scavenging and poor organization led the debris to pile up at home. I have never come across such a messy place before. The entire space is completely filled up with garbage, posing a great threat to his health. We would like to alleviate his suffering, so we help him clean his home so that he can have a comfortable life and become healthy. The medical and administrative personnel of Taichung Tzu Hospital and Cao Tuan Tzu volunteers with a total of more than 50 people were together to clean his house. We would do a preliminary sorting of garbage here after recyclables are sent to the liaison office. We'll sort them in greater detail. It took almost an hour to clear our space on the first floor. Volunteers had to go upstairs to clean, as Mr. Tian said he was really unable to clean up. In the future, if I have collected some recyclables, I'll send them to Tsuji Recycling Station directly and not let it pile up at home. Thank you all the volunteers and doctors for coming here to help cleaning. Thank you very much. The doctors, who are not afraid of masses, use their life-saving hands to help the disadvantaged clean up their living environment, passing on this loving care to patients in need. Tsuji is continuing its home safety improvement project in Huan and Strozi Township, helping a hunched over grandma who has mobility issues and walks with the aid of a laundry basket to move about more comfortably at home. Grandma's son, who is in her 70s, usually walks with the aid of her laundry basket, which makes everyone feel distressed. It's really inconvenient, so we want to help give her a way to be more like us ordinary people. We hope it can be comfortable for her. At home, she depends upon the furniture, and the Zhiji Home Safety Improvement Project aims to care for and improve the safety of the elderly at home. This grandmother, who suffers from nasopharyngeal cancer, is independent and strong and doesn't cry out for help. I depend on myself. I don't rely on others. I have to endure the pain. If I keep staying here and don't stand up to walk around, I will never be able to walk again, as I will just sit here. Volunteers especially brought a walking frame on this visit. Take your time. It also has wheels. Yes, I paid it on purpose as it's better for her. This volunteer also accompanied the grandmother on a walk outside. Tsuji's home safety project enlists a professional team to help this grandma install handrails in the bathroom to avoid falling. When we came in, there was an obstacle here. It's quite big and not easy for her to climb over. This threshold is here, so we'll help make it even. From evaluation to leveling of the ground, it requires division of labor and cooperation of the team. Each group has professional workers. We also have committee members to visit and local volunteers from the village to lead the way. It's the same in every village allowing care and charity to take roots in communities. Tsuji's home safety project in Zhuoxi Township has successfully completed 230 home visits in six villages, 
over the past two months as the repair project is ongoing. In Jakarta, a car accident changed the life of an Indonesian young man who underwent amputation of his right leg and received Suzy's assistance for prosthetic expenses. Now, 10 years have passed, he has a stable job and a harmonious family. He then wants to reciprocate Suzy's love to help the needy. I believe all these arrangements, even though I'm facing adversity in life, these are the best arrangements for me, and I will have a good way to go in the future. Wearing a prosthesis, he learned to accept this kind of self. It is a care for more than 10 years that let him go out of the low ebb and face a new life. I like watching Zijie volunteers help each other. Seeing their giving action makes me want to be a volunteer, helping each other just like them, so I'll try my best to give. He is really diligent. Although he is physically disabled, it didn't hinder his movement. He can live a normal life like ordinary people. He even joined a distribution event in 2018. He is really hardworking. People may not notice his prosthesis because he is very agile. He has no difficulty in carrying heavy things. Instead, he will ask proactively if there is more for him to help when he's done. Leading a normal life, he, Handoku, wants to prove to the world that he can also live comfortably after amputation. In Malaysia's Johoburu, a family member of a volunteer had a wound in the foot, which festered due to numerous health issues. Thankfully, team members came to her home to give her treatment so she doesn't have to amputate her foot. Disinfecting and wearing a mask, Tima members and volunteers visit Chai Kai Ying to help change the dressing on her foot. From the first time to the second time we visited, we have seen improvements. She is recovering quickly. Thankfully, Dr. Luke is taking care of the wound for her. About a month ago, her wound was small and it quickly spread to a bigger one. She went to the government hospital. They told her to change her dressings at home. It could be because the hospital was too busy due to the COVID situation. Her sores related to her rheumatism and other conditions which may have contributed. It's multi-layered, including problems with her arteries and veins and inflammation, which have caused her sore to degrade faster. Seeing her sore turn for the better, Chai Kai Ying is able to smile once more. Before you guys came, I would have dreams where my foot was very swollen, and I tried to use different things to disinfect it. Then I would wake up from the dream. I just lay here unable to move, with my foot wrapped up. However, now I don't have those types of dreams. I'm happy to see a doctor and have him take a look. <laughs> Thankfully, we were able to contact Ji through my aunt, who is a Ji volunteer. Through her, the doctor came to take a look, and my mother is recovering well. Otherwise, I don't know what I can do for her. When symptoms are light, it's best to seek professional help, so one does not miss the golden opportunity for treatment. On the loss and damage day at COP26, different parties discussed the impact of climate change throughout the world and how to allocate resources to the countries involved. Suzu also shared what it had done to help solve climate-related food shortage in Zimbabwe. In COP26's second week, Suzu's UN delegation held a press conference on the topic of loss and damage incurred by climate change, 
in South Asia and Africa. They also provided specific measures to mitigate climate change impacts. When you look at climate change, if we want to reach our climate goals of warming of up to 1.5 degrees, uh, we, we definitely also need to look at the impacts of land on the climate system. What I see by attending all these COPs is that actually civil society is very, very motivated and very concerned about this issue. And it's no longer something which is being just uh, discussed by academics and behind closed doors. So I'm very happy that at least the civil society and the young people, they are very, very eager to see some change happening. But the flip side of things is that we don't see enough uh, real action and real decisions by the decision makers. In Southeast Asia, we have been facing a very significant challenge of land and forest fires. And these fires are causing very massive greenhouse gas emissions estimated up to uh, 2 billion tonnes of CO2 equivalent. We have sea level rise, we have increasing storms and typhoons uh, affecting people. So hopefully from this meeting we will get resources in loss and damage and, and then it will be made available to those in the region affected by climate change. Our policies and strategies must be anticipatory rather than reactionary. And we must use real technical solutions, real strategies, and with a close working relationship with local communities. Suji is helping local communities in that village in Zimbabwe to adapt to a drought condition, drought situation where they can't even grow food in most of the cases. In my opinion, it's just great to see any progress. And progress is not something that you see very often in these kinds of spaces. Uh, but any little bit of progress that we see, it's quite an achievement. Um, and I come to COP every year. It's a space where we could actually come together to solve a problem. With COP26 rallying global perspectives, Delegates from the Vatican, too, expressed their humanitarian concerns and made calls for solidarity and action. I come here as a messenger of Pope Francis, as part of the Vatican delegation to COP26. And Pope Francis, last Sunday on 31st of October, at the beginning of the COP said, we need to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. And another cry, if I might add, is the cry of the youth and young children. It is time to act, time to act together. Now, Earth is alive. Earth, what we say, is, is God's creation. Earth is sacred, and, and religions need to come together. For the past week, 1,800 NGOs and 25,000 people, coming from upwards of 200 countries, attempted to seek consensus at COP26. As to how to implement positive change, that's something we as global citizens must decide together. In Tainan, 150 Suzu volunteers gather at the Sanghua Liaison office every week to make 1,600 vegetarian lunch boxes, which are then distributed to 14 different areas. Let's join them there. Coating in flour, then dropped into cooking oil, volunteers become chefs, preparing every dish meticulously. I help wash the vegetables, cut the vegetables, and prepare lunch boxes. Many volunteers are equipped with special skills, which come in handy when preparing these tasty dishes. If anyone is deficient in any area, I will remind them. At first, I arranged the dishes, and then I ended up with quality control. 150 volunteers had to make 1,600 lunch boxes before 11 a.m. One kitchen was of course not enough. This led to a special tent area set up the day before so that seven dishes were prepared simultaneously, which was more efficient than past efforts. First we deliver to far away places, especially volunteers going to mountainous regions are further taking more time to go to remote areas. A week ago we did a special rehearsal. This is for our vaccine fundraising event. Every time the lunchbox order is more than a thousand, we didn't expect the response is so overwhelming. In October, volunteers of the Tainan Sanhua Liaison Office worked hard to promote vegetarianism everywhere, despite the heat. 
If it's cooked so well and is beautifully presented, we can inspire more people to go vegetarian. This is our common goal. Every Monday, we will promote vegetarianism to the organizations, companies, the public sector, as well as banks in 14 townships. From the cities to the remote villages, there are now delicious vegetarian meals available. Volunteers recommend such cuisine in small neighborhoods to generate donations, helping spread more compassion and love. The year and blessing ceremony for Cixi's new honorary board members was recently held, which involved a brother and sister pair, a well dressed senior in her 80s, and a Cixing alumni who donated his wedding financial gifts to Cixi's vaccination fund. Zhen Jianzhong grew up in a Cixi family and joined the Cixings when he was in school in Australia. His affinity with Cixi has continued as he is now getting his certification for Cixin. When he received financial help from his parents as a marriage present, he and his wife donated the amount to Cixi for vaccinations. It is my hope that as long as I am able to reach the youth, I want to help spread Cixi to the younger generation. When Wu Jingxiu underwent spinal surgery, she vowed to do good deeds when she was done. And although she couldn't recruit any donating members during her volunteer training, the encouragement from her Dharma family helped her persevere on the path. Now she finally finished her volunteer training. We must seize opportunities in life, as it doesn't come around often. <laughs> This person in her 80s especially wore her qipao to the ceremony. I've always thought of the Cixi qipao was very beautiful. I hope to learn from your enthusiastic spirits and also help the community. A former actor of Da'ai drama, Lin Pei Shen, is here with her brother to join the year in blessing ceremony and also fulfill their mother's wish. Becoming an honorary board member has always been a wish for our mother. She always wished my brother and I would be like her. Ziji has really been infused in our lives. Since we were pretty young, our mother was already a volunteer. She joined many Ziji activities, and we actually have a pretty strong affinity with Ziji. Although it may be difficult to give at times, giving, if possible, is the best path of charity one can carve out for themselves and their family. To help raise vaccine funds, Taidong Jing Su Ho had a charity carnival, where everyone came together to contribute and do their part for pandemic prevention. <laughs> The gong of love rings as the Taidong County Mayor invites everyone to participate in this fun charity carnival set up by Ciji. As it's the weekend, Executive Yuan officials also visit the Taidong Jin Si Hall to join in on this fun and charitable event. Thank you, Ciji, for helping the country purchase so many Pfizer vaccines for our citizens. Participating in today's charity carnival is the least we can do to contribute. I can buy things I'd like to eat and donate to charity at the same time. I bought a pack of almond powder and a pack of snack cheese. It's pretty good. Among the 25 vendors, some provide their own organic vegetables, others secondhand clothing, while some even provided fresh veggie burgers for sale. Love and positivity accumulates as we are all doing our part in preventing the spread of the pandemic. Human beings are currently facing two major series. One is COVID and the other is climate change. Instead of pursuing profits at the expense of Mother Earth continuously, we should all reflect upon the impact of our wasteful consumption and take action to protect our environment. When humans lived in fishing and hunting more than 10,000 years ago, our impact on the environment was not so obvious. Today, there are so many people living on the Earth the threat that mankind possess to other living organisms is huge. Now, the sixth mass extinction, under the huge population burden and incomparable greed, 
will be a tragedy as we can no longer survive. Can you smell the scent? The faint fragrance on your hands, it's cool. I was born in Penghu and grew up by the sea for a lot of my life. There should be at least 300 species of fish living there. But today I'm 68 years old. I know that when I walk by the sea with my grandson, if I walk over the intertidal zone of Taiwan, it would be nice to find a hundred kinds of fish. From the Industrial Revolution to the present, it has only been two or three hundred years. We have made it clear that we have disturbed the laws of nature. That is, our slaughter of species has been caused by our invasion of other habitats for other life forms. Human beings are like viruses that inhibit the earth and then harm the earth. Humans and natures are interdependent. When the human heart is distorted, the human heart becomes chaotic and greed can be too strong, inspiring this quest to destroy the environment and the ecology. As these are the four major imbalances. In the 21st century, mankind faces the threat of COVID, but another crisis in climate change has long been like a frog in warm water that is slowly heating up. Maybe it's climate change and global warming. I think more of us have heard of becoming numb to this. It may be very shocking at first, but in the end, there will be a feeling that it seems inevitable and powerlessness. Young people are not indifferent to climate change. They just have to find areas of personal interest to get started. The 100 Fern Garden of Tsinghua University was established at the end of 2020 to conserve endangered ferns. It is very difficult to prevent the disappearance of species. The thing we can do is to find a way to preserve plant species and find a way to find a suitable way to cultivate them. To save the earth from extinction, perhaps we can start by understanding nature. Xinjiang's Nature Valley, which is a rare protected low-altitude virgin forest in Taiwan, has become the first environmental education base, which over the past 10 years has hosted guided tours to inspire nature education, attracting the attention of youth and adults. We allow them to get closer to nature. Many are afraid of insects or even some snakes that you may think are poisonous at first. We actually don't know how to get along with these creatures initially. But if this doesn't change, then the next thing is that they will disappear. Mother Earth does not speak, but has silently endured many challenges. But as she ages and the environment changes, no species will be spared. That's just like the saying in the Buddhist scriptures. A pure heart means a pure country. If your heart is pure, this country and the environment, this entire space of our existence will follow it. In Chile, Susan Volunteers host a fundraising event to help a hearing impaired student buy a new hearing aid. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.